In this section of the class, um, I'll be talking about the commercial market, the commercial segment, and the advertising agency, and the things that they're looking for. There's different market segments that we license content to. There's your individual, there's your brands, there's your agencies. Um, so there's a wide variety of clients that Pond5 works with. Um, we look at the individual user, and that could be the student, that could be the independent filmmaker, documentarian. Um, those are our clients, as well as the bigger agencies, advertising agencies. They're looking for content to pepper within a commercial spot. Um, it's just a wide, wide variety um, of people that we serve. It's safe to say that a lot of content that you see, that you hear, has actually been licensed through a company like Pond5. Um, it's an incredible asset to be able to sort of go to a bank of content and be able to utilize that and use it within your work. So again, safe to say that, um, and you're completely probably not even aware that you're looking at stuff that was pre-shot or shot with the themes and concepts that we develop here and so on. Um, it fits into their work seamlessly. Um, and again, I, I can guarantee that you wouldn't even know that if you looked at the content that it had some stock in it. Every artist is different. Every artist has a specific uh, thing that they like to do and like to shoot. So what I try to do is find out what that thing is um, and then I try to build something from that. I think that your best work is when you're shooting something that you're passionate about. What stock does, it affords, it affords you to be able to do that. Um, when you're working with a client, you get the, the job, whatever it may be, and, and you shoot it. Uh, the beautiful thing about this is you get to shoot what you want and what you like. And I could almost guarantee if you're shooting what you like, um, there's money to be made, made from that. Not to say that you shouldn't take a challenge here and there. Um, I have one guy I know that all he shoots is dancing, ballet. That's his thing. And he's done very, very well with it. But what he has to do if he continues to shoot the same thing is reinvent himself all the time or reinvent what he's shooting. Um, and he does. So um, you can pick a genre that you like to shoot and you can master it. And there are clients out there that will get to know who you are. Um, the one thing about Pond5 is that if you're an artist, you can put your name up there. And we do have clients that go directly to those artists and choose their work. It could be because of their style, it could be for a number of reasons, um, but they feel comfortable going directly to that artist um, and choosing the genre that that artist usually works in. So if we're shooting something local here in New York, we think about how global, what's the global reach of the content that we're shooting? Can, can the client or people around the world identify with the moments that we're creating here in New York, in the United States? And there are certain things that are going to translate to India, to Europe, to South America, Asia. Milestones. Milestones are sort of the bread and butter of what we do. We have birthdays. We have baby births. We have weddings. We even have funerals. These are all things that anywhere in, anywhere in the world can relate to. So not only do we want to capture what's happening regionally, we also want to have global outreach. The idea of creating volume, not for volume's sake, but for storytelling's sake, is incredibly crucial. When I talk about volume, I talk about cutaways to the story, I talk about transitional element shots, all kinds of things that create the entire story from beginning to end. When we talk about volume, it is not unlikely, it's happened many, many times. If you shoot a subject, guitar player for instance, make sure that you get coverage. Make sure that you do your close-ups, your mediums, your wides. You might want to do the take of that song the guitar player is playing three, four, five times until you get it right and you feel you know it's right. And get a variation, different setups and submit the entire shots. Um, there is a strong possibility the client will use all the shots for the entire spot. Very, very important. I think it's really important. I still believe that shoot briefs are very, very important. And 
a shoot brief is is your strategy. It's your shot list. It's it's basically the um, the the structure of of what you're attempting to produce. And um, I still produce and create shoot briefs today for the guys that I work with. Um, we also develop mood boards to accompany those. We pass everything from videos off to each other, links and all kinds of things to get us inspired. I think that it's, sometimes it takes a month, sometimes two months to get it actually produced. But by the time we're out there, we have a pretty good idea of what we're doing. We know what we need to shoot. Um, but I still think it starts with a shoot brief. And I really think it has to be put down. I'm still kind of an analog paper guy. Um, I like to take a pen, and if I do have that piece of paper or brief in my back pocket, if you think of an idea in between something, you're writing it down. Or hell, you're taking out your iPhone and you're putting it in your notes. You know, this happened, that happened. You're taking a picture so you remember. So things do happen, but you have the structure that um, you could refer to in your shoot brief. I think it's one of the most important things. It's probably the most important thing that you can have when um, you're producing a shoot. Here's the most important thing about keywording and a shot. You want to get a shot, first of all, that you can embed as many keywords and concepts in as you possibly can because those are the shots that are going to sell the most. So um, being able to come up with, for instance, skateboarding. I think I used the example earlier where if you take a skateboarder and you start to think about um, agility, precision, focus, concentration, besides all the literal interpretations of what a skateboarder does, what you're doing right there is you're embedding that shot with a pretty substantial amount of keywording. And why that's so important is that a lot of clients will not only look up the literal term, but they'll put conceptual terms into, into the browser, into the, search, into the search area. So it's one thing to think about is if you're gonna shoot something, how many conceptual terms and ideas can you embed into the keyword search? So um, I always say the more that you have, um, the more valuable and lucrative that shot will be. The best shots for stock or, or any sort of video is what has the most motion, first of all. The subject. What subject has the most motion in it? You know, you think about a writer. As much as I love literature, it probably wouldn't make the most exciting shot. You could put keywords in there and whatever have you, but there's not a lot of action going on. If you take a street artist, you got a hell of a lot of action going on. So it makes the perfect subject to actually shoot is someone making street art. You have the literal interpretation, then you have an abundance of themes and concepts that you can put on that as well. So you got to pick your subject where you can get a lot of volume, a lot of different angles and sort of keep away from the things that are pretty stagnant or stationary. Um, as we all know videography and video is movement. That's really the key. So think about subjects that move, that are dynamic, and that you can get volume from. There's also something that's really, really great training for what we do. You have to capture what you're trying to say without any sound. We don't have any narrative. There's no dialogue. I think it's been one of the best training exercises I've ever had is to be able to make something look natural without the use of dialogue. You're still capturing the energy you're still capturing all of that. You know, it's funny because even though we shoot with no sound at all, we never know what the client's gonna put on top of that. We never know if it's gonna be a voiceover, and that's one of the most exciting things about what we do. Are they gonna put music, a famous piece of music over it? We never know. So approach every job, whether it's a band thrashing on the stage to that writer sitting at his desk, you know, focusing on his next novel, you'll find the passion in both those situations that are just as equal. So for the project in this class, when you're creating your clip, think about how you're going to be covering motion. Incredibly crucial. Think about that.